A sizable part of what makes a standout entrance theme is that signature sting. You know what I'm talking about. It's that unique sound effect played right at the beginning of the song to pop everyone huge before the music even kicks in. Now, sometimes these not so subtle noises can turn what's considered to be a decent tune for a good character or characters into a massive calling card, turning them into wrestling gods. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes, and don't forget to subscribe because here are the top 10 best opening sound effects in entrance theme song history. After failing to connect with wrestling audiences at the onset of his career, Bradshaw found decent mid-card success as a member of the APA along with Ron Simmons. But he didn't truly grab Vince McMahon's brass ring and break into the main event scene until he rebranded himself as John Bradshaw Layfield, a wealthy, big-mouth, modern-day million-dollar businessman. Arriving in a long, white, stretched limousine, JBL's entrance combined his Texas roots and his real-life accomplishments accomplishments as a New York stock market investor. The opening ringing bell sound effect in his theme called Longhorn is symbolic in that it represents what occurs at the start of a regular trading session, but what the sound really represents in wrestling is JBL's overall stock rising as he bullied his way to a Hall of Fame career. Yeah, we coming now. Being the only tag team featured on this list says something about the impact that Bubba Ray and Devon made during their illustrious careers. One of the most decorated of all time, the Dudley Boys have been tag team champions 18 times. Oh, and they had some hot theme music too. Thanks to Jim Johnston and the song We're Coming Down. The missile style pyro bomb flying from the arena roof onto the entrance ramp accompanied by an incoming bomb whistle like sound effect was like shouting a gigantic wild Zap, to let their opponents know that these EC dub originals were about to dish out some legitimate hardcore punishment. With WCW on top of the wrestling world and thriving because of the success of the New World Order, an interesting decision was made to split the group into two separate factions and allow Kevin Nash to lead the NWO Wolfpack. Now, everyone thought that the NWO was cool already, but this angle provided the ideal scenario of a face group of the NWO feuding with the heel NWO Hollywood. To differentiate between these two groups, the Wolfpack developed a sort of hip-hop style and the reactions they got show just how over the red and black were. But what really helped them was the Wolfpack's insanely catchy theme produced by the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, with a simple hip-hop beat and opening Howling Wolf sound effect that was just too sweet. Speaking of Kevin Nash, given the name of Diesel, as suggested by Shane O'Mac, Shane McMahon, based on the fact that Nash was from the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan, Big Kev's initial entrance theme was a sample of semi-truck engines revving and loud horns beeping. Extremely annoying, to say the least. Thankfully, soon after winning the WWF Championship from Bob Backlund at Madison Square Garden in eight seconds, these noises were layered with more bluesy, harmonica-driven music that fueled Diesel. Diesel's ascent to the top. But if you need more proof about this sweet sound effect, just go back and watch the 2011 Royal Rumble match and listen to the reaction Big Daddy Cool gets when this song begins. Now, you can't talk about Kevin Nash without mentioning his best friend, Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, becoming the stylish Cuban-American bully and one of the greatest intercontinental champions of all time, Chico. With squealing tires announcing his arrival, the bad guy oozed machismo as he strolled down the aisle to a much more relaxed tempo and percussion cowbell beat, reminiscent of the song Lowrider by the group War. <laughs> The 
The Hall of Fame career of Mick Foley was no accident. He was one of the toughest performers to ever lace up a pair of boots, and his pain tolerance for taking crazy high-impact bumps night after night after night cemented his legacy as the true hardcore legend. Foley's Titantron video at the time was chock full of images of mankind falling down steps, getting smashed in the head with a chair while handcuffed, and the bump to end all bumps being thrown off the top of the Hell in a Cell by The Undertaker. The car crash sound effect at the beginning of this theme pretty much sums up what it must have been like to wrestle Mrs. Foley's baby boy. Throughout your life, there are only a few precious moments in time that you'll remember exactly when, where, and what you were doing when a life-changing event occurs, such as laying eyes on your first crush, the birth of a child, or when CM Punk made his iconic return to pro wrestling on August 20th, 2021. Now, whether you love him or you loathe him, you can't argue that this was a goosebump-inducing moment that made grown men openly weep tears of joy. The crowd that summer night in Punk's hometown of Chicago was white hot and welcomed him back with one of the loudest, most sustained pops ever. As soon as that infamous static scratch gave way into Vernon Reed's legendary guitar riff. Now, Cult of Personality by Living Color is a song that absolutely rules. And being associated with Punk's reignited love of pro wrestling makes this truly an anthem of absolute wrestling triumph. In what is possibly the greatest entrance music opening sound effect outside the traditional mainstream wrestling promotions, Kazuchika Okada's metallic coin flippy flip simplistically lets everyone know that the Rainmaker is in the building. What follows next is godlike and grand, befitting the man who makes a point of having the best entrances in the industry every single year. Now this song brilliantly conveys the idea that the new age star Okada is a generational talent and the unquestioned ace of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Much like his legendary main event career, this track proceeds with a series of thumping, impactful bursts before galloping into a vast deluge of flamboyant licks tailor-made for a classic video game-like fighter. All right, all penis jokes aside here, whether you want to call it a gong or a dong, but The Undertaker's entrance music is one of the most iconic in all of pro wrestling history. Over his 30-year career, Taker's theme consistently evolved from a haunting graveyard symphony to the rap rock of Limp Bizkit and Kid Rock and back to a more refined, more triumphant culmination of his debut theme from 1990. In short, it's everything the dead man should be and so much more. Legendary former WWE composer Jim Johnston's ode to the Phantom of the Opera, the ominous bells that toll in the beginning signal The Undertaker's arrival and lead into the most breathtaking, awe-inspiring entrance in the world of sports entertainment. From the second you hear the sound of glass breaking, you know, and I know, that Stone Cold Steve Austin is about to make his way to that ring. What? Hand out a few stunners. What? Drink some beer. What? And open up a can of whoop ass. Never one to subtly enter a room, the Rattlesnake worked closely with Jim Johnston to create his signature song that he wanted patterned after the Rage Against the Machine hit, Bulls on Parade. Capturing the attitude of the Stone Cold character in song, Johnston produced the opening sound effect by layering together the sounds of multiple pieces of glass breaking, a massive explosion, and a crazy car crash. And for that effort, he certainly deserves an oh hell yeah. 